And we are live, I believe. Yes, we're live. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I would like to call to order the May 7, 2020 committee uh, meeting of the Harris County Board of Education. I will um, entertain a motion at this time that we accept the agenda as presented. No, so moved. Uh, Mr. Goodno, second. Second. Uh, Ms. Oliver, any discussion? All those in favor, please respond by saying yay. 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 Dr. Sparks. Yay. Any opposed? Motion carries. At this time, that will bring us to item C that the Harris County Board of Education enjoy an invocation uh, for the National Day of Prayer presented by Pastor Gary Hartman of the Antioch Baptist Church. Pastor Hartman, thank you so much for being with us tonight on uh, this day that is uh, recognized by our nation uh, for a moment of prayer uh, and invocation. And uh, I think you are currently uh, on mute. So if you will, please lead us in that invocation at this time. Remove yourself from mute, excuse me. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, sir, thank you. Okay, well, let's go to God in prayer. Father, how thankful we are that we have a loving, caring, giving Father. You have always been there for us. And Father, we are going through difficult times. It's not just in the United States, but throughout the world with the COVID-19 virus. And we realize that uh, going through this, uh, it has had an effect on the Harris County Schools. And I thank you, Father, that we have had a, a board who has been aware of the situation, a board who has not just set idle, but Father, one who has moved forward to move the schools forward to be there for the students and for the teachers and for each other person who is involved in the school system. I thank you, Father, that you are, even in the midst of bad times, the God who gives good gifts, and you do. We ask God that for our Board of Education, that you bless them. Bless them, Father, with abundance, continue, to work through them to bring the best education that we can have for our school system. Give them, Father, your wisdom, your guidance, your courage, and your strength. I pray, Father, that as they deliberate, as they uh, discuss, Father, as they move forward, that you would give them the wisdom to make the right choices and decisions. Help them, Father, to have insight into what needs to be done to lead the school system forward, to have the insight to lead with integrity that the decisions that they make will not only be reflected in the school system, but Father, to remember that the reason they're here, the reason that the school system is here is for the education of the students. Father, give them vision of what they are to do. Help them, Father, and once again, I ask that you help them to make the right decisions that are going to benefit the students. But Father, because the students are part of Harris County, decisions that will benefit our county. Thank you for being with them tonight. And I pray this in the name of my Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Pastor Harvin, again, we thank you so much for uh, providing the invocation for us tonight. Thank, thank you, you for you, the sir. invitation. And that then will take us to item D, that the Harris County Board of Education review the attached meeting minutes from the board meetings held in April of 2020. Um, those were included in the uh, agenda packet. Um, does anyone, do any of you have any uh, questions or discussions about those uh, those minutes at this point? Nothing at this time. Okay, we'll review those. If you uh, have questions or uh, 
edits or anything that uh, please get in touch with Mr. Couch and uh, he will see that we get those amended before uh, next week's meeting. Uh, that will then bring us to item E1, that the Harris County Board of Education listen to a curriculum department update from Dr. Denny. Dr. Denny. Good evening. Good evening. Well, first thing I wanna start out by thanking the faculty, staff, students, parents in the community for the great job that they've done in this difficult time. You know, we put in a lot of work to try to continue working with our students and have them be best prepared for the next school year. Uh, with that, we know that next year we are gonna face many difficult challenges. Uh, with the biggest thing being students missing nine weeks of instruction this school year. Uh, so in curriculum, we really have three areas of focus that we're, that we're, we're working on. Area one is to really finish out the school year this year and to assist administrators and teachers in continuing to work with those students and to plan together for the next school year. So my group, myself and my group, we're working on supporting the virtual meetings with between teachers and students, teachers and teachers and the administrators and their staff. Uh, anything that's coming up pressing on professional development, whether it be how to use Zoom, how to use Google Classroom, uh, how to have students connect, our team is providing that PD when needed multiple times a week too. And then the other big thing we're doing is we're participating as a group in curriculum in the grade level, departmental level, school level um, meetings that are going on. One, so we can see what the, what the pressing needs are. So we're learning a lot with what we're currently doing with the uh, distance education. So if we have this situation again next year, hopefully it'll be much more improved over what we're currently doing by learning. Uh, we're also learning what the challenges and what the teachers think the challenges are gonna be for coming back next school year and how we're going to address this nine week learning gap. The second area we're gonna focus on or we're focusing on is preparing our teachers for effective online instruction. So more than likely at some point next year, if the virus comes back around, we wanna make sure that 100% of our teachers are prepared to fully instruct online. So the things that we're working on to make sure that we're prepared is my team is currently completing their Google level one certification and they're developing a plan to get all teachers in Harris County level one certified so that they understand and know how to use the Google products because that is our main system that we use to work with both teachers and students. Uh, currently conducting classroom trainings on things such as what we're gonna do with the classrooms at the end of the year, how we're gonna reuse materials that we've assigned this year, next year, and just the general know-how and how-tos of Google Classroom. Uh, in development is the criteria for what Google Classrooms will look like next year. So this year we, we have the digital, the packets in there that are digitized that we also handed out in person, but we wanna set criteria for every classroom of things to include, such as, you know, there may be that paper packet, but there should be other things such as videos students can use to view online assessment systems, um, I hate to say worksheet, but the digitized form of the worksheet. So it's just not a digitized PDF. And then the last thing in the area of preparing teachers for effective online instruction is actual we're planning for training of what is effective online instruction. So we wanna make sure if we get in the situation that we're doing everything possible and we're doing the, the things in the right ways to enhance student achievement. And then the last area that we're focusing on is how we're going to address the nine week learning gap for the next school year. And we have a couple of things we're doing to, to gear up for that. Uh, the first thing is we have to identify what those learning gaps are. So we've met with all the administrators, the majority of the teachers and grade levels, and they are in the process of identifying what essential standards are that they missed this year that are essential for them to be successful in the next year. Um, Part of that is those teachers are also, so if, we're, if we've identified the gaps in second grade, they have to get with the third grade teachers in school and say, okay, here's, here's what we see as gaps and here's how you can address those. Uh, some other things that we're working to address the gaps, 
as you know, this year we, we bought into the Illuminate data and assessment system. That system will allow us to build benchmarks, build formative assessments and tag them by standards. So when our students come in, we can give them those assessments using Illuminate and use that assessment data to guide our instruction and figure out where we need to go with the instruction for students. We're also working on with the state, going to state trainings with a program called DRC Beacon. This is a milestones-like system that the state is providing free of charge for schools for third to eighth grade math and ELA. And the idea is the same, except they'll have some pre-built benchmarks and pre-built formative assessments. On top of that, we can customize our assessments and uh, the benchmarks and assessments to figure out where it is our students are at and where they need to go. And then the last thing, every time we meet with teachers, you know, while our classrooms are, are really based on the standards that the state of Georgia has out, we're really making sure that we have a laser-like focus on the standards we're going to be teaching. And going along with that, making sure we're focusing on the standards, making sure our assessments are really concept mastery based. So we want to make sure if I'm, you know, I have to be able to figure out how many electrons are in an atom that our, our assessment is assessing that. And then once they know that we move on, we have to be next year, we have to be really efficient with our time and make sure again, we have that laser like focus so that we can make up or attempt to make up this nine weeks of mislearning. Uh, and then the last thing is that one of the things you know that we've been focusing on in the curriculum department is reading and writing literacy. That will not change, you know, this nine weeks or next year. We've actually continued the guided reading trainings and actually brought more of that on board. And then, of course, we're continuing to do our writing trainings. We'll be doing some of that virtually over the summertime rather than having the, the person come down to the school and then we're looking at getting that also done next year. So that is, I think with the, with the nine week gap, that's gonna be one of the biggest areas of concern is making sure that reading and writing, and of course math, we get those skills and make sure we have those skills in order to move forward. But that's all I have for you tonight. If you have any questions, I'll go ahead and field those. Dr. Denny, I had some questions. Yes. The first one with the DRC beacon, you said that was like the milestone? Correct. Is that for third and eighth grade this year, or is that something you're looking at in the future? That will be available, not this year. It'll be available the next school year, which, you know, rolling around in August. And that's third through eighth grade for ELA and math. So third through eighth grade. Correct, for yes. For 2021. And next, you mentioned the Illuminate system. And Correct. using that, is it those assessments or any of those online or digital? Or is it just both Illuminate and DRC are di are online and digital? the The neat thing about Illuminate is it's very. It, there's a lot of ways you could administer assessments, so you can do it on you know do it online on the Chromebook on the computer, on your cell phone. But you also have the capability of printing out paper. You know, if you want to print out a paper bubble sheet, you could do that. So it has a bunch of different ways in which it works. And is that something that we're going to start using again next school term, or is that something we're going to look at finishing this nine weeks out? With? Probably not this nine weeks, because remember, we, we got it this year and we tried to roll it out January, February, and that the first six months was really that small rollout. Okay. But we're actually next, I believe it's next week, we have training on Illuminate. And we have, I believe, somewhere around 80 teachers signed up to, to really start ramping up the use of Illuminate because the need has presented itself a little bit more than what it was in the past. Exactly. And last, I'm not sure how many students may have been in the SST process. How are we handling that? I'm going to get back to you on, with an answer on that, but I believe essentially the process was frozen in place. I believe the concern was, you know, next year when they came back, they were going to have to start the process all over again. Mm -hmm. But the, the last I heard, but I just want to confirm, we're freezing it where it was and we're going to pick up where we left off this year. And I guess I do have one more. Special ed, for the limited amount of knowledge I have about the special ed program, 
those IEPs, that's like a legal document. I guess, have we been given a waiver or something in that aspect? Ms. Baker may have an answer to that one, but I do know like all of our IEP meetings, Mr. Mr. Johnson has been doing those along with teachers virtually, mm -hmm. uh, I believe via phone call, not, not um, virtually seeing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. I know they're, I want to say he said there were either 100 or 300 meetings that they had to have, but there are some that need more than that phone call and they're waiting until uh, August next week. Ms. Baker, did you have any other information you can add to that? No, you just summarized it. That's correct. They've been having the telephonic meetings, not the virtual Zoom meetings, and the teachers have been involved as well as the parents. So they are up to date on their IEPs and they will be in compliance before the end of the school year with making sure all those IEP meetings that were supposed to be conducted this school year are conducted. Thank you. And I guess not so much the meeting itself as far as like the instruction that they're supposed to receive. Well, I was going to speak on that in my okay. section, but we are Can going I'll to wait. I'm sorry. I can go ahead and say it now. I could just eliminate that part, but we are going to have the extended summer year that we normally have at the end of the school year, typically it would take place in June, but because we're still not sure about the COVID-19 closures and guidelines and restrictions, we are scheduled to have that July 6th through the 29th. We are projecting to host those at Harris County High School and at Creekside, and that will be for grades K through 12. We have grade span teachers that will be presenting instruction to each of the different grade spans, K through two, three through five, six through eight, and then of course, nine through 12. Thank you. Speaker, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't write as fast as you could speak. July the 6th through when? July the 6th through the 29th. So Thank the you. entire month of July, unless DOE tells us something different. Of course. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions uh, well, for Dr. Dean? Uh, yeah, Shane, I have one. Please. I would like to ask, um, since we're going to a lot of online um, studies and assessment, is there any way that we are able to um, survey um, our student population of those who have uh, limited access to the internet or no internet or limited access to the, the hardware to get onto that? We are, so we could do a simple survey just by putting it out there and getting people to respond, which is one of the things we're looking at. We're also working with uh, one of the internet providers to tell us who, who has the capability to get and who does not have the capability to get. In other words, what, what the service area is. So while we don't have that information yet, we are working to get that information to figure out where our pockets are. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to mention and. Uh, Dr. Finney might mention it in his presentation is we know we have those pockets and we're, we're doing a small pilot with one school bus where we're working to get essentially sort of like the mobile lab, but the mobile learning lab is about Wi-Fi inside the bus and a little bit outside of it. We were in the process of getting a system where we can try to shoot that Wi-Fi signal 200 to 300 yards outside the bus to expand Wi-Fi capability. So when we do identify those pockets or areas that can't get the internet, we should be able to get that internet to them. While, we, while it may not be possible in all areas, we're just, we're trying to work to bump up the number of students that do have that availability. One of the other things that we're doing because we know that that's a struggle Within the curriculum part, you know, when we're thinking about what next school year is like, we, we think that we're going to run into the same situation. So one of our thoughts is when we design our curriculum next year, we're designing it around this idea of a playlist. And a playlist, if you can imagine, is just a folder that has the video, that has the worksheet, that has the activity for the students to do. But not only can you get to it on the Internet, but you download it to a device that the student could have. So now when the student goes home, they don't necessarily need internet to access all those things that we want for them to be able to do. It's on the device with them. So we're, we're trying to account for that, you know, for those students that didn't have it this year while still providing a, a higher level of instruction than we currently are. What about in regards to the kids that do not have access to a device to have? Mr. Goodenough, we've got a plan related to that that we'll be presenting as we review the budget. 
at this point, we're dealing with uh, a lot of different monies coming from the state and then other monies not coming from the state. So we're looking at that and, and I agree with you in our system. Um, there is a discrepancy of those that have the ability to learn on a device if they have one and then those that can't because they don't. So we're taking that in consideration, but uh, you guys are gonna get to make some decisions about that in the next month or so. No, all right, thank you. Very good. Other questions or comments? All right, then we will move on to item E2 that the Harris County Board of Education hear a human resources department update from Ms. Carlisle. Good, Good evening. evening. Good evening. Good to see everybody again. Also want to say happy, it's National Teacher Appreciation Week and also our nurses celebrating them and um, in Harris County, we just consider ourselves one team and we generally just celebrate everybody that's doing the great work in the schools. Um, just to say, um, as, as all of us are, we're just really proud of our teachers and the, the hard work and the dedication they're showing during the school closure and our, our administrators as well. They are, they are teaming together and really working hard. Um, a lot of our teachers, if they're not working with students, they're volunteering in the community to support um, businesses and students and the nutrition and the feeding program. So I'm really proud of them. So really appreciate them. But moving to uh, the agenda, uh, as far as current um, employment postings, that's something monthly I share with you. Um, you'll see there's only two postings there, uh, the pre-K special education teacher position at Park. That was uh, posted earlier today before printing. Uh, that has closed since that time. So the only position posted right now is that of bus driver. And we're always recruiting really great and safe bus drivers in Harris County. So that is posted. Number two, um, during uh, this year, we had our big kickoff. Our partner Mentoro is our financial wellness educator for our Harris County employees. Yesterday, uh, presented Mentoro presented uh, another session. They had two different times and it was called, what's your next move during, especially during challenging times. Uh, with the school closures. Originally, we were offering a class quarterly for all of our employees, but since um, the pandemic, Mentoro has really stepped up and they are providing classes every other week and they're available to our employees free of charge. And um, we really appreciate Mentoro um, stepping it up because a lot of people are unsure during these times and giving them good advice um, is how to take advantage of uh, discounts and offerings with financial vendors. So we had uh, really good participation yesterday. And just another quick note, um, for about over a year, the human resources team, we we're really working to modernize our department. And a big goal was to streamline and go with online onboarding processes. So as we bring people on as new employees, we do as much of that uh, in a streamlined, efficient way. And the good thing for us is we got ahead of the pandemic and the closure and that process got moving and we're looking forward to going into the next year with uh, streamlining our employment processes with secure online forms. And that is for employment and for benefits elections to digitized forms. Um, now that's the norm, but I'm really um, proud of the team being ahead and being ready and um, we got ahead of the curve. So I'm really proud of them, a lot of hard work on their part. And number four on your point there, um, for 2020, 2021, the staffing plan um, with the online registration, of course, um, usually that goes throughout the summer with uh, parents and we're encouraging them. Usually it's by July, but I appreciate Dr. Finney and his team moving that deadline up to uh, 1st of June. We really need to get a, a solid count of our students and who will be attending this fall because we are planning um, for our class counts and our class counts will help steer and direct our staffing. So human resources is, is working on that and that we wanna make sure we're efficient and strategic in our positioning. And I appreciate the uh, data team working with us on the online registration. And last but not least, um, 
in support of uh, Superintendent Couch and the task force groups he's putting together. Um, human resources, we're putting together a post pandemic back to school, back to business protocols and FAQs for employees. Um, just as other teams are working on feeding the students during this time, we are working ahead um, to bringing everybody back. We're looking forward to that, to bringing people back into the building where it's safe and people feel secure and we've got expectations and we've got plans in place. So um, that is not ready right now, but we are working on that and it's, it's in progress and that's going well. We are using um, resources, of course, with the CDC, Surgeon General, OSHA, state and federal recommendations and mandates. So it's a busy time in HR, but um, really good at the same time. We're proud of our, our faculty and our staffs working hard. Very good, we're grateful for the hard work as well. Any comments or questions for Ms. Carlisle? Mm -hmm. Very good. Then we will move on to item E3 that the Harris County Board of Education listen to a support services department update from Ms. Baker. Good evening again. Good evening again. Um, I'd like to start with some good news from our academic support department. Uh, we have two people in our system who have been recognized by the Georgia Department of Education for exemplary EL student and teacher. And we have Mrs. Michelle Johannes, who is our Harris County High School, well, Harris County School District ESOL teacher, and Melissa Stokes Martinez, who is a senior at Harris County High School. And both of these have been recognized by the state for their exemplary status in the EL program. Both will receive recognition from State Superintendent Woods. Mrs. Johannes will participate in a virtual award ceremony in October. So if you know them, if you see them, please um, give them congratula congratulations. And the funny thing is Mrs. Johannes, who did not know she was being um, nominated, actually nominated Melissa Stokes Martinez. So it's really a full circle award there. So we're very proud of them. Um, in our school nutrition department, I have given you an overview of the meals for the month of May, April, I'm sorry. But I would like to tell you that we have proudly served 75,038 meals since we started the program on March 16th. We do have two more serving days that will be this coming Monday on the 11th and our last date will be May 18th. As we complete the meal distributions for the school year, we are working on plans for our summer feeding program. Typically the program will take place at park, but we're trying to spread that out a little bit, not as big as the program is now, but we do have a waiver that allows us to continue to serve throughout the community until June 30th, which is our summer feeding window anyway. So we're gonna to try to expand that to probably the need, the most um, areas that have had the most populated people that have come for our meal distributions, but I'll give you more information on that as we approach um, the month of June. And along with school nutrition, um, I wanted to give you some news that um, is kind of disheartening a little bit, but you know that the school nutrition program is self-sufficient. And with school not being in session since March, there has been no generated funding through the a la carte purchases nor through um, the My School Bus. So the month of April and the month of May, when we look at their financials are going to look a little bit dismal because they're gonna be in the negative because those monies are not being generated that we normally would get. So we didn't want you to be surprised when you see that great discrepancy between what you have for this month and what's coming up for the next two reportings that we give. Um, the good part about it is that we are still getting our reimbursement from the state for our drawdowns from our normal meal distributions. So we do get some monies in, but we are looking at um, about a $36,000 deficit for the month of April and maybe a 5,600 deficit for the month of May. So again, I didn't want you to be surprised when you saw those numbers just to know why it looks like that. But um, we're hoping that we get some help from somewhere that will help us come back into the positive status. Um, in our social services department, to go along with the Google Classroom trainings that Dr. Denny was speaking about for our teachers, we are looking at 
hosting virtual learning sessions for our parents because we know that parents have now become homeschool teachers in a lot of respects and our teachers are pretty much well equipped in using Google Classrooms and assigning those assignments and our students are used to doing those assignments at school on Google Classroom, but many of our parents are not familiar with it. So we're going to do a focus this year on just ensuring that parents are comfortable with and are familiar with using Google Classroom so they can help navigate those sessions when their students have assignments at home. And um, I spoke to you about special ed already about the ESY. And the last thing that I have is that next month I will be bringing to you the updated 2021 student code of conduct and the list of discipline tribunal panel members for your approval so that we can get that started for the um, next school year. And that's all I have, unless anyone has any questions. Any questions or comments for uh, Ms. Becker? Ms. Becker, I have a couple if you don't mind. Yes. Um, so, well, a comment really, I want to um, commend all the work again of the, um, the nutrition staff, the transportation staff, volunteers, the teamwork that has gone into serving an amazing, I think you said 75,000 meals. Yes. That is amazing uh, because each one of those meals represent a home and represent a child and um, that is significant. So thank you. I also appreciate you bringing the, um, the heads up on the deficit. I think we all anticipated uh, some dismal numbers, but, um, you know, to see it in writing is, uh, is, is good, uh, and interesting. Um, but, you know, again, in, in light of that, uh, again, we were, you were still able to serve 75,000 meals. That's, um, that is significant. So, um, kudos to your team. Thank you, Mr. Liff. And thank you to the board for your support. We had, um, several board members that came out and helped us load last week and they see the work that goes into that process. It has really been a team effort. We've had great support from the entire Harris County School District and we're just grateful. The school nutrition staff, transportation staff work well together and it has really been a seamless process. So thank you for that. Any questions or comments? I, I had a question, Mr. Lip, I'm sorry. Please no, don't apologize. So Ms. Baker, I saw the report and some of the sites they reached their max, um, for instance, forts. And I saw that 150 meals out of 150 meals were delivered. And so are, are we turning people away or do we send them? Because some of the sites don't meet, reach their max. How does that work? What happens is we prepare the meals based upon the numbers from the previous week. Mm -hmm. So like one week you probably would have seen sports and was at 200. Mm -hmm. And the next week they may have gone down because when we served, we may have served 150 out of 200. Mm -hmm. So we prepare based upon the numbers from the previous week. But if we ever run low, we all have, we have runners. Thank so you. people actually run back to park or to the high school to get the meals that the families need. And they have been very generous and waiting for us. Thank you. We take the food back to them. So we leave no one in that line without any meals. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Very good. Any other comments? Very well, thank you, Ms. Baker. That will then take us to item E4, that the Harris County Board of Education listened to a facility, the technology department update from Dr. Finney. Good evening, everyone. I good um, evening. am happy to be here and welcome to everyone that's joining us uh, from the community, welcome. And um, the first thing you'll uh, see in your packet, you have the landscaping recommendation uh, for, the, for the next year's landscaping uh, contract. And um, I'm asking to recommend Chuck's Lawn Service out of Pine Mountain, Georgia. Um, he had the most competitive bid um, and was very qualified and met all the requirements of the specs to, uh, to um, receive this contract. So in that packet, you have the um, recommendation memo, you have the tabulation sheets of the companies that um, bid. And so you'll see what their bids were. And then you also have the specs of uh, the contract. So you can see everything that the, that price um, entails. And um, his price was $121,930. 
and that's a slight increase of $13,000 over our current contract, which is a lot better than what we were expecting. So if you look at those tabulations, you'll see the range of, of the bids. So if you have any questions, please let me know. <clears throat> the next thing you have in your packet is the Creekside construction contract. Um, Southern A&E provided that for us uh, for this meeting. And um, that was the, the most qualified competitive bid was JR uh, construction out of um, Carrollton, I believe. Um, and so you can read through that contract and see the, uh, the scope of the project and the bid price um, that they put forward. Any questions on those two projects? Uh, while you're there, so uh, let's do open for questions or comments on those two items. Donna, I do have a couple. Dr. Finney, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question in the contract, and I, I don't. I apologize, I don't have it in front of me. But okay. uh, on the contract for the landscaping, are the athletic fields in that contract? Yes, they are. Okay. Yes, they are. Okay, that was my question. Thank you, sir. Yep. And so I would follow up with that, Dr. Finney, and ask. Uh, I assume they were included in the previous contract as well. Is that correct? Yes, sir. They are. So um, you mentioned a uh, $13,000 increase over what we're currently paying uh, and that, that was better than what you were anticipating. Uh, why, why did you expect an increase? What, what changed, I guess? Just we knew all along from the first time uh, that Southern Green uh, or Georgia Green, our current contractor bid, he, he low bid uh, very low, uh, the current contractor did. He's currently our current contractor is um, currently handing it over to his son who is in Atlanta and so his son bid on the project from Atlanta so I'm assuming that the cost that 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 company would entail to come down from Atlanta um, if they were awarded the contract would be that additional cost but ever since Georgia Green has had this contract it's been a very very good bid a very low bid compared to what the market usually has. So we were, we were expecting anywhere from 50, $75,000 increase in the bids. So we were very happy that um, this bid came in only $13,000 over what we're currently paying. The other thing I noticed, thank you for that. The other thing I noticed in here was, um, of course it was specifically um, identified uh, for the new Harris County Carver Middle School. Uh, of course that entire you know, acreage will be a mud hole for a while. I mean, it's, it's completely tore to pieces. So um, do you anticipate, um, I guess, and no one can know, but uh, once that building is established, uh, some of, the, some of the, the, the grounds will no longer need to be uh, kept, but there'll be a new standard, right? Because there'll be new landscaping and things that have to be taken care of. Yes. Do, you think, do, you, do you think this number represents that large swath of land that's not going to have to be cut now? And are we looking at a significant increase um, when that when that uh, comes on to play? I guess I'm just concerned that with this bid price and there's a large portion of acreage that's not having to be cut, it's, it's not going to be cut in the future, although there will be some landscaping involved. Do you see any uh, significant differences, price savings or increases as that comes down the pipe? No, this contract, these bid specs represent what the requirement is going to be when that building is built. Okay. Um, so we projected that out because in the contract, the stipulation says if we're satisfied with the service for 12 months, there's the opportunity for us, the option for us to extend it by three years. So we projected it out what the requirements are going to be um, on that property when the school is built. Uh, the current contract and the bid specs include cutting that entire field back there, uh, but this would this bid and these specs include what the what the site's going to entail when the school is built. Okay. So we don't anticipate an increase for for this. Okay. Um, then uh, another question, if you would, on the um, uh, the Creekside addition. Um, if I recall correctly, 
uh, and I'm going to look at the, uh, the agreement, of course, in detail, but I recall correctly, uh, the final bid that was proposed was uh, significant savings um, from what we had anticipated. Is that correct? And would you expand yes, on that? So the, the, the architect's estimate and what we planned for for our financials was $1.8 million for that contract. Um, JR Construction came in uh, as the most qualified bidder and competitive bidder at $1,280,537, uh, which is a, a significant savings. There will and, even be a more sub, uh, substantial savings when we get our capital outlay money, and that'll be another additional $335,000. $335, so our local contribution out of the financials that we've already planned will be less than a million dollars for this addition. Nice. All right. Okay, thank you. What else do you have, uh, Dr. Okay. Um, as far as technology, um, Dr. Denny uh, kind of covered it and Mr. Couch did too. We're working with curriculum to determine um, those device needs um, and what our options are gonna be. So we'll have more information on that very soon as Mr. Couch said. Um, one of the big uh, milestones that we've got and it's uh, gonna be very valuable to us, I think is all of the schools um, have outside Wi-Fi now in front of the building. And we're gonna be going public with that tomorrow, um, notifying the public and um, how to access it and where, where can you go and what's the range. The only school that won't be up and running tomorrow will be Harris County High School, but we're anticipating we'll have that up and running on Monday. Um, and the way it works is you go uh, and you try to connect to uh, the Harris County Schools, excuse me, public website or public um, access. And when you try to log on to there, there's going to be a terms of service that people have to agree to. And we will emphasize in all the messaging and communications that this Wi-Fi service is public and it is monitored and it is filtered. Um, so we want everybody to be aware of that. Um, I've also notified all the SROs at the schools and uh, the sheriff's department that uh, if they see cars parked out of there and they drive through there, there might be people using the internet. So I wanted to make law enforcement aware of that as well. Good. Okay, any questions on that? I don't have a question, but I'm pretty excited about that. We are very excited about it. I tested it out at, at a couple schools on my way home today. That is exciting. Yes. Um, as far as security and safety. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Dr. Finney. No, forgive me for interrupting. I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me for interrupting. It, it probably goes without saying, but as the new middle school um, is built, I'm assuming that same accessibility is being planned for that as well. Yes, sir. Fantastic. Thank you. Yes, Go ahead. That, that thing's going to be that thing's going to be state of the art. I, I expect no less. Yes. Uh, with security and safety, I'm currently in contact with Karen Norman from the Department of Public Health, and we're beginning to plan what a reopening may look like. We don't have a lot of details right now. Um, the waters are pretty murky out there, but um, I wanted to make sure we were working with the uh, Department of Public Health to ensure that we were going to be in accordance with any kind of guidelines or uh, recommendations that we were looking uh, from the CDC or Department of Public Health. So, um, you know, we're looking at what the requirements and guidelines might be um, in every aspect from social distancing to PPE to all of that stuff. So um, there will be more to follow on that. Um, we have, Dr. Dr. Denny uh, has ordered hand sanitizer. So we've got our hand sanitizer on the way. And um, Cheryl Johnson has ordered some masks for the bus drivers. Um, and that's mainly to, um, to apply the um, sanitation uh, disinfectant that we're gonna be using on the buses. And ABM's helping us get those sprayers and the um, chemicals for that, um, which takes me to cleaning and sanitation. ABM's continuing on with their full cleaning of the schools and facilities. Um, they're getting into their summer cleaning and preparations now. Um, sanitation with service masters continuing for the food service, uh, prep areas, central office transportation, and the food service buses that we're using. We're sanitizing those um, each Monday after those operations. Um, 
we're working on getting the cleaning plans and bus sanitation plans for if we come back full time. Um, and we're going to be um, having those plans in accordance with CDC um, guidelines. So we'll be having a lot more work done on that. Um, any questions so far on, on cleaning sanitation? No. No. Okay. Maintenance and operations. I'm proud to report that the Harris County High School gym air conditioners um, should be operational tomorrow. Fantastic. Um, and I'm going to uh, be so excited when we go over there and fire those things up. Um, they are big and they look like they can cool it very easily. So I'm very excited to get those going tomorrow. Um, that's been a real seamless process. Jackson Heating and Air has done a tremendous job. Um, and when they start cooling, that'll, that'll be great. Um, student information systems, um, as was mentioned before, the online registration. Dr. Fanning. Yes, sir. Real quick. Sorry, can I ask you a question real quick? Um, will those units be secured by either a, a gate or fence or something going around them, I'm, I'm assuming? Well, they haven't been in the past, but we're looking at, we're looking at possibly doing that, uh, especially with these brand new units. Given that, uh, given that they are attractive, attractive units, so we are looking at that. Thank you. And while we're paused, uh, let me make a couple of comments or questions. First of all, thank you uh, to your team for the um, all of the uh, you know the sanitation and the effort that has gone on uh, in working with ABM as well as your team in the classrooms and the buses. Uh, supporting the, the school nutrition. Uh, I know that we are, or have been, and this may be a question for Mr. Couch, or you either one, but I know we have have, have been housing uh, Superior Court uh, in our high school. Uh, is that continuing? When does that end? And how is the uh, sanitation or cleaning going between, you know, in that facility between their use or whatnot? Mr. Couch? Uh, they're going to crank up the courthouse Monday, is my understanding, and to my knowledge, okay. they've not used it at all. Right. Okay. Thank you. And there is a sanitation plan in place. Any other comments or questions on anything that's covered so far? I do have another question, Shane. I got Please another go question, ahead. Shane. So, Dr. Rafina, you, you mentioned, I guess, I guess in preparation for next year, I guess, will the bus drivers be responsible for cleaning their own buses with, I guess, I'll, I'll just say pump up sprayers for lack of a better term and that kind of stuff. I mean, is that what the ultimate plan is, is that they will be maintaining their own buses? Yes, the ultimate plan is, is that after the morning, they're gonna have one of those uh, small sprayers um, that, will help, that will hold a safe, non-toxic plant-based chemical it's roughly the same chemical that we're sanitizing with now that can be sprayed on any surface. Um, it's used on the desks and door handles and all the stuff in it's the same stuff as in the schools. Um, so each bus driver will have that sprayer and they'll run their morning routes. And then after their morning routes, they will um, quickly um, and very lightly spray down their uh, bus because it doesn't take much of that chemical uh, to disinfect the surface. And then they'll run their afternoon route and they'll do the same thing after their afternoon route. And we will do that daily. Is there a plan in place in case we have to, I guess, do social distancing on the buses where only maybe one child per seat or any of that kind of stuff? I mean, well, we are, we are looking at what all of the recommendations and the guidelines are right now. And, um, we're going to be working through that that challenge is all is all the details I have for you right now well and I I mean Scott I think you're on mute, I think you're on mute. I'm sorry so That's right. uh, um so I mean I understand we're still a few months away so, I mean, I know things can change day by day and right now. So I don't expect you to have an answer just to be frankly honest with Dr. Finney. I was just didn't know if, if there is a contingency plan in case that does come down the pipeline. We're developing those contingency plans now. 
looking at looking at you know what our options will be and um, how practical that would be and um, you know if you if you have fewer kids on the bus you need more buses so you know how would you route that how would you have um, do you have enough buses if that was required so we're 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 talking to other districts. We're talking to the Department of Public Health, and I, I wish I had some specifics for you at this time. Uh, but we are developing those, looking at those contingencies. Well, and I'm hoping they're going to make a decision soon enough to where we can have a plan. You know, have time to could to put a plan a plan in place. You know, not right. just wait, not wait till the last minute and say, oh, by the way, right. It, it's been our experience at this point. They're referring to uh, suggestions, recommendations, those kinds of things, but th they're not coming down with some hard and fast rules. Even the recommendation to maintain students at six foot, that's a recommendation. And, and you know, although based on what we see transpires this summer, we'll have a better idea of what we need to do. Uh, it's gonna be really difficult to put kids six foot apart on a bus. But I'm sure yeah. we'll, you'll be aware of what the options are, and you guys will be having a lot of input to the decision. Because it'll impact the budget. And a lot, most of the uh, CDC literature that accompanies the guidelines and contains the guidelines and recommendations, they make a list of guidelines and recommendations, but then they say it's ultimately left up to the uh, to the local organization. Well, I, look, I've been at the I've been at the high school during during class change and I just don't I don't see how you keep those kids six feet apart especially get the class you know change classes in a timely manner we we are definitely faced with some challenges absolutely yes sir. we look forward to your recommendation hmm. let me uh can anybody hear me Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Let me let me address that uh, using the high school as a as a court and whatnot. Uh, about uh, three weeks ago, uh, uh, Judge uh, McBride uh, telephoned me and uh, and asked uh, because there was a, a uh, an order that came out of the uh, Georgia Supreme Court dealing shutting down basically all uh, all uh, trial jury trials, uh, grand juries, everything except just a couple of them and really didn't have a place to to hold them uh, uh, that uh, uh, and uh, and so uh, I among other things at that same point in time Judge Lakes the probate judge came down with the virus uh, and that led to the uh, the shutdown of the uh, Harris County Courthouse which opened up back uh, uh, back up today but I, you know, the only place he could come up with were to hold these hearings that he, he they had to have which are very minimal, uh, was uh, someplace over in the uh, Harris County Jail. Uh, and uh, I suggested uh, and uh, that, I, uh, that I call uh, uh, Roger. And then uh, one thing led to another and uh, we worked out a plan so that he, they could use uh, one of the conference rooms off the Harris County Library. I don't think it's been used yet and had any hearing scheduled, but uh, it's, it's there. I was on a conference call with uh, 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 two of the uh, Superior Court judges and uh, a whole a bunch of other uh, folks today uh, uh, trying to figure out how the district attorney and some others, when they're going to be able to start having uh, grand jury meetings and active trials and, and, uh, uh, and plea, uh, plea days and that kind of stuff. And uh, it's going to depend on when the, the, uh, what the Georgia Supreme Court comes down with and when. But uh, the uh, Judge uh, McBride was very, very uh, 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 appreciative of uh, Roger and, and your school and the school system uh, stepping up and saying you can use our conference room uh, off the library, you know, at least during the summer uh, and, uh, and or, or until the uh, uh, courthouse gets back operational and, and when they can start having all the regular hearings in the courthouse. Uh, but uh, it, uh, that is what uh, the, the, the plan is if there has to be a place for hearing you'll be there and uh roger volunteered to uh to uh cleanse the uh the, the room after it was after it was used and judge mcbride like i said is 
the chief judge for this judicial circuit in uh, which includes Harris County, and he he was most appreciative uh, in uh, in in uh, uh, being able to use if he has to the Harris County uh, uh, High School uh, uh, library and the conference rooms off of, off of that. And the, there was one conference room, he said, that's gonna be large enough for anything we, we will have to have. So it will not be, they will not be conducting trials and, and jury uh, uh, deliberations and uh, uh, all that, that stuff until uh, uh, in only, only emergency uses uh, where if uh, there are certain circumstances of things you just cannot put off injunctive, injunctive hearings and some other things. So. Uh, it'll be a, a very limited use, uh, and then hopefully by by mid June uh, they'll have the courthouse back and uh, start having uh, grand juries and and uh, uh, meetings and and having trials. And but anyway, the courthouse opened today uh, for uh, and they you know, for uh, people coming in to uh, to uh, buy tags and go to the clerk's office and file deeds and. And that kind of thing, and there is a uh, uh, there's some limits with only ten people. They allow only ten citizens in the courthouse at any one time, uh, and uh, but uh, they'll be able to 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 get the, the the work done. So it's a it's it's a strange time, and it's I've never seen anything like it before. But uh, it was uh, uh, they just trying to uh, they, they, it's going to depend on when the uh, when the social distancing starts. Uh, getting lifted in what the Georgia Supreme Court says when the courts can start functioning uh, again. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. And Dr. that's- Dr. Finney, I think you're on mute. Okay, last two items is I just wanted to mention that online registration is up and running. We've already got 30% of the people have completed their applications. Uh, so we're um, off to a lot better start than we were last year. People are more familiar with it. And then the only other thing is the update on the uh, Harris County Carver, the new Harris County Carver Middle School. If you haven't been over there, they're um, getting a lot done over there. They got the detention pond dam uh, built and they are going to begin grubbing trees. Well, they've already started grubbing trees now. Um, and so they're moving right along on schedule. I'm subject to anybody's questions. Dr. Yeah. Penny, I, I had one. Please. Um, I know parents uh, have been contacted about their children, specifically, I, I have one at the middle school, and I know we got the call about staged times that they can come back into the school and return like library books or get their stuff out of their lockers and, and things of that nature. Um, I know we're, we're, that's staggered and everything like that, but have we set up a time for our teachers to be able to come back and and clear out their classrooms and, and is that scheduled for those folks as yes, well? Yes, most of the teachers, we did the teachers first, so most of the teachers were this week. Okay. Um, most of the teachers were this week and so that went very smoothly. We didn't want everybody in there together and so now they're the principals, once they've accomplished that, they're getting a plan together for their individual schools. Um, to get those things ready for the students, um, to get them in a location that parents can easily drive up to and quickly and efficiently get their stuff and drive on. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit different for middle school and high school. Well, middle school, because they'll be cleaning out some lockers, Creekside will be cleaning out some lockers. Um, but each, each principal's got that plan and the teachers have already been done. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Dr. Penny? Very well. Then that will move us then to item E5, that the Harris County Board of Education discussed the selection of a board member to represent District 5 of the Harris County School District. Um, I would like to open the conversation by uh, thanking we had um, two candidates uh, present last week for that position. And I am grateful for uh, both of their interest uh, and their presentations. Uh, presentations went very well. And uh, I'm thankful uh, for their interest in serving the community and putting their name forward uh, in such a capacity. Uh, and so uh, we will uh, open the discussion at this time. If any of you have any comments or questions you would like to, to discuss uh, regarding that position that will um, 
to take action on later in the agenda. And for the uh, District 5 seat that will um, take action or take seat, I suppose, on June the 1st. Any comments? Uh, I'll, I'll start. Um, I, I would again like to thank both of them for, uh, for putting their names in to, uh, to join our group. Um, I know getting out and becoming a member of, uh, you know, a, a group like a school board or something like this, it takes a lot of time, you know, away from your families and things like that. And, and I would like to thank them both for, for uh, putting that in. And, and I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that um, we need to, you know, appoint someone for uh, District 5 because they, they, they don't have a voice. I mean, of course, we all serve all of the students in Harris County, not just the kids and parents in our districts, but as, because we work as a team. But, you know, that, that group doesn't have a voice right now. And, and I think they deserve a voice, um, you know, in, in, our, in our group. So uh, I, I thank both of them for, for putting their, their names in for consideration. And they both have very, very good qualifications uh, to, to join our group. That, that's all, Mr. Chair. Very good. Any other comments? Oh, yeah, Shane, I like to make comment. Please. Um, I know I'd like to thank the candidates also who applied for that. And I know that Garnet was uh, has a feeling of replace, you know, getting a replacement for that district. Um, I've kind of heard pros and cons of both candidates. I've also heard both pros and cons of um, uh, our process that we're involved in. And I've kind of come to the conclusion in the fact that uh, I know it's our duty and responsibility to uh, replace that position, but I also feel with the democratic process that that the constituents in that district need to have their own voice. And um, I'm kind of torn between that with us who are not members of that district uh, choosing someone to occupy, occupy that. And um, so uh, I'm torn between both candidates in regards to that. Um, and I guess my overall feeling is that uh, I feel that with this process, it might be better to, to let the democratic process take place and have the constituents vote themselves. So that's, that's kind of where I stand at this time. And uh, thank you, Steve. And to your point, so the, uh, the constituents will have that opportunity in uh, November, correct? So it is, uh, Mr. Taylor, keep me uh, honest here. Uh, it is uh, our duty. We can choose to not fill the position and allow the, um, uh, allow the seat to remain open until the, uh, the next election, which is in November, or we can fill the position and then the, uh, the position would still become available again in November for replacement uh, or uh, succession, I guess it would be the right word, uh, for January the 1st of next year. So, so we, we have the responsibility of either filling the position now uh, and appointing someone or not filling uh, and deciding to uh, leave the seat open until, um, until the voters come to the, to the uh, voting booth in November. But either way, this position will be on the ballot uh, in November and open for, um, for candidates. Is that correct, Mr. Taylor? Uh, yes, the, the statute does not prescribe the method by which you fill the, the slot, but the, the statute does says you shall fill the, uh, the position. And, uh, and, that, uh, and they would serve, uh, whoever you appoint serves until uh, the, uh, the uh, qualifications uh, uh, time for the next uh, general election, which will be November. So that candidate uh, could uh, decide to, uh, the, if you fill us, and when you fill the slot, that candidate could decide uh, he's not going to uh, not to run again, and then they would be open. Or the the other candidate uh, uh, could run against uh, the other person that you, uh, the one you don't select, could decide to run against the candidate you do select. So it uh, the the process is uh, up into uh, up until November. Uh, it uh, the uh, if it had been longer in the uh, in uh, in the term, uh, it, it could have been a, a year or more before you you, you had that selection process. But the way the thing worked out, you will be basically uh, filling the, the slot for 
uh, temporarily or for a, somebody to to, uh, to fill that slot until uh, they uh, they run in November, which is what six months off uh, or so. Uh, but uh, the statute says you shall fill the slot now. Uh, if, if you, uh, I don't know how you would go about uh, having, uh, you couldn't conduct an election uh, uh, between now and November. I don't know how you'd go about getting the, the, everybody's, the, the, uh, the people in the dis district five to, to, uh, to uh, make a, uh, make a, a selection between them or those two or, or they may have, may come up, somebody may come up with another, to, another slot, but I, I think the way the statute reads, you you fill the uh, the slots, uh, fill the slot, and then that person runs at the next term, uh, which would be uh, uh, in November, and they would fill the uh, the remaining two years of the uh, the of uh, Bethany's term. I would like to say something, Mr. Lewis. Please. Um, and I hear what Mr. Ray is saying as members of the school board, and we do come from different districts, but we represent the county as a whole. But I represent District 7, which is District 3, 4, and 5. And so I am happy um, and open to any suggestions and recommendations to make myself more accessible to any of my constituents at any time, whether that seat is filled or not. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Very well. Then we will move to item F1, that the Harris County Board of Education review for approval the attached computer science grant as presented. Mr. Couch, would you like to speak to that? Mr. Couch, I think you're on mute. I'll probably need to practice for unmuted anyway. Uh, Dr. Denny uh, ha has presented this as a way to provide a stipend for those people who wish to be get an endorsement in computer science. Uh, Dr. Denny, would you like to address this issue? Sure. <clears throat> so we have, and I forget the exact number of people on that list, but I want to say it's seven teachers that signed up for the computer endorsement on their certificate through the CS4GA grant. And due to the COVID virus, we've had a lot of things get canceled, which has freed up some funds. So according to Brian Cox at the state and in accordance with some other districts, because the endorsement was a little bit more robust than was planned for by the teachers, the extra money, which I think amounts to $400 per teacher, we would use that as a stipend upon completion of the four courses and getting the endorsement for computer science added. Any questions or comments on that? I had a question. Please. So Dr. Denny, once they get this endorsement, what does that allow them to do? Teach computer science, just some courses? It allows them to teach computer science. So one of the, one of the purposes of the computer science for Georgia grant was to vastly increase the number of teachers that can teach computer science in the state of Georgia. Uh, I don't know that any other counties have as much participation as we do and will have as many computer science endorsements within their county, but it, it will allow for some flexibility when it comes to scheduling and uh, course offerings at all of our schools from K to 12. That was my next question. Out of these seven teachers, where do they currently work? Are they? Oh, let me pull up let the list. And Dr. Dr. Dan, David, to... David, four at Creekside, one at Pine Ridge. No, five at Creekside, one at Pine Ridge, and one at Harris County Carver Middle School. Any other questions, Dr. Sparks? Not at this time, thank you. Certainly. Uh, Dr. Dan, let me ask a question. So the, the, the stipend uh, is um, our, our funds, I guess, that were assigned from a grant specifically for this computer science class. Uh, and um, I apologize, I was taking notes, so forgive me, but uh, have these uh, teachers completed the course or this, are they finished? What is the next step? Uh, no. This stipend has helped to assist in completion. R remind me of what you said on that again. They have, I believe, one more course over the summer to complete before, they, before they've taken all four. So this is just 
this is just one of those things. The money has to be spent. There are really no other opportunities for teachers to be trained because of the cancellations. Okay. So rather than lose the money, we reward, you know, reward getting that endorsement because one of the things I've been told, you know, when you get an endorsement, I don't want to say it's, it's easy, but it's not overwhelming. And what we found are essentially these are for extremely time consuming and uh, difficult classes for them to get through all while, all while working. I mean, essentially they are the four graduate level courses in the course of two semesters for these teachers. Wow. Any other comments or questions on that on? And of course that's in your package you can review and uh, we will take action next week if you have other comments. Okay, then that will bring us to item F2, that the Harris County Board of Education review for approval the attached spending resolution as presented. Um, Mr. Couch, would you, would you like to speak uh, to that spending resolution? I think we touched on it a little bit um, uh, last week, but uh, if you'll revisit that for us uh, on the spending resolution. Yeah, I'll be glad to, Mr. Lip. I appreciate it. Um, this information has come down uh, from the state, the DOE, through RESA, and it's something that's, that's uh, happening across our state of Georgia, um, primarily because it, it's a timing issue. Normally we have, like I think it was last year, uh, our final proposed budget for this school year was uh, ready June 2nd. Um, and now, because of the way things have occurred with the COVID-19, stay at home resolutions and all, all the executive order that came out. Um, we, the legislature has not met and will not meet until June 11th to determine how much money is gonna be spent or sent to schools. Normally we get an allotment in March. We have no allotment. Uh, we hope to have one by the end of June, where we'll know what the state money is. We'll know what kinds of uh, funds we can anticipate from them, and we'll have other things in place, um, you know, the local effort, all that kind of stuff, we'll come together about that time. You won't have the time to sit down as a board and determine exactly what you want to do uh, to establish an approved budget, maybe even into July. So what this resolution does and, and what the state's recommending we consider is you resolve to give me an opportunity to spend no more than one twelfth of what, which is a month, no more than one twelfth of what next year's approved budget is. Does that make sense? I can go ahead and start spending things, getting ready for the opening of school, doing that kind of stuff. And you'll be aware of what all that is. It comes out in these board meetings all the time, but it gives us a chance to do that before you we don't want to get in a situation where we can't, I don't have the authority to pay the bills without your permission. And that's what this resolution is. It keeps us operating until you have time to make a decision on what the final budget is going to be next year. Because at this point, we're obligated to um, have that budget approved before the end of June, of course, because new fiscal year starts in July. And if uh, state legislature is not meeting until second week of June, uh, to your point, uh, it might be a little difficult to um, to get those numbers from them and put together the budget and have that resolved uh, by the end of June, within, as we'll say, within a couple of weeks. But uh, So uh, I'll open the floor for comments or questions uh, regarding the spending resolution recommendation. So, so Mr. Couch, as I understand this, this is basically just items that are going to be in the budget. This is just advanced spending of the budget being passed, correct? Correct. Gotcha. Thank you. Other comments or questions regarding that? Uh, and the the resolution that um, Mr. Couch provided in the package, uh, of course, is a um, is a sample resolution, generic. And um, Mr. Couch, I I trust that um, you and Ashley will work together to to fill in these blanks and to personalize it, of course, for for our needs. Uh, and we will look at that next week to take action. Are there any other comments or questions on that before we move on? I would want to say, uh, Ms. Sawyer's already done that. It's ready for next next month, next week. Thank you, Ms. Sawyer. 
All right, then we will move on to item F3, that the Harris County Board of Education review for approval, uh, the attached list of FY 2020 ESY personnel as presented. Uh, that too is included in your package. Um, uh, Ms. Baker alluded to this a few moments ago, but Mr. Couch, would you like to uh, add more commentary to this uh, ESI, ESY personnel list? Uh, this is something that we've fortunately been able to have an opportunity to do for years. Uh, we have from the federal government and the state government too. Um, special needs kids need this. I, I was really concerned that they didn't have an opportunity to do it during June, but I'm really pleased that we have it during July. We have two locations. Uh, and, and we have some incredible confident people working with them during the summer and, and it's real benefit to them and to us. And we, we strongly encourage to all approve it, of course. Any comments or questions? Very well. We'll review that if you have questions, get with Mr. Couch and uh, we will take action on that item as well next week. Uh, that will then bring us to item F4 that the Harris County Board of Education select and approve uh, the candidate to fill the vacant seat representing District 5 uh, board member for the Harris County Board of Education. Uh, I will entertain uh, a motion at this time. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. Please. Uh, I would like to make a motion to fill the vacant board position in District 5 uh, with Mr. Harry Proctor. Okay, I have a motion on the table. Do I have a second? Second. A second by Mrs. Oliver. Any discussion? All those in favor, please respond by saying yay. 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 Any opposed the same? Or any opposed with nay? And I vote yay. Motion carries. Uh, with our congratulations to uh, Mr. Proctor uh, for the appointment uh, for the seat that will begin June 1st. Um, and let the record show that Mr. Goodno uh, abstained from voting. Is that correct, Mr. Mr. Goodno? Um, no, I did not. I will. I go apologize. Along. I didn't hear you vote. I'm so sorry. Um, I will go along with the consensus of the board. That, okay, uh, forgive me. I'm sorry, Steve. I, I didn't hear your vote and I apologize. Uh, I was watching and so that was my failure. But the motion carries. Um, and again, with congratulations uh, to Mr. Proctor. Okay, then that will bring us to item G1 that the Harris County Board of Education review the attached school nutrition financial report uh, for March 2020. Uh, Mr. Couch or Ms. Baker, would you like to speak to that? or not. <laughs> not only Thank you, I was going to turn it over to you, but I can't see you. There you are. This may be the one you want to speak to next month, not so much, but you go ahead. Not unless you have questions. Um, you see that we are still in the positive, so that's very good for the month of March, considering we only had two weeks um, of revenue that came in in March. Yeah, I'm glad you said that, because that was one of the questions I had. That was... Um... That was pretty significant, uh, considering the fact that we're only in school through March the 12th. Um, I was pretty impressed. Uh, I did want to ask a, a question, if it's okay, Ms. Baker. Um, the participation uh, percentages, um, they I, obviously, they were for 12 days a month uh, as well. But if you look at that, considering a full month over last year, uh, not much movement. I mean, they were still on track to be uh, assuming that they continued where they were, right. um, pretty much in line with last year. They were. And um, speaking to, even though it was only 12 days, we were very fortunate that a lot of the bills that school nutrition had to pay were paid between December and January. So we didn't have a lot of um, disbursements that went out between January and March. So that's why the revenue looked so healthy for the month of March and month of um, February. Sure. Miss Baker, yes, if I could go back, I just want to make sure I wrote this down and heard you correctly. You were pre-warning us about next month? About this month? Because well, you're always a month behind. So when you get the financials for each month, 
you're looking at the previous month's numbers because by the time we have the board meeting, the current month is not ready. So next month we'll be bringing you April's and of course in, I mean, May will bring you April and then June will bring you May. And you gave us kind of a estimate on how much those deficits would be? Yeah, projected. Projected. We're and hoping that we're wrong, but yes, that's what we're projecting. Did you say 36,000 for April? I did. April was about 30, exactly the exact number for April is minus $36,041.57 is what the projection is. And for May, it was 5,600. Yeah, um, negative $5,661.39, if our projections are correct. Okay, thank you. You're I welcome. Ms. Just... Baker. Yes. Why is there such a big discrepancy in April and May? I mean, there's only real, there's only differences a half, in essence, not even a half a month. I think because May, you're not buying as much produce and as much um, food because school is gonna be ending in May. April, you have a lot of disbursements because you're preparing for May. And May, you're not preparing for June because June school is not in session. So you don't have as much going out to be spent on restocking the cafeterias. So in essence, the deficit for April is actually for May and then May is, would be later on. Does that, does that make sense when I say that? So if, if you got a bigger number in April, is that for May? And then May is less because it would really be in just for what's left over in May? That's correct, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments or questions regarding the food nutrition financial? Fantastic. Uh, that will then bring us to item G2 that the Harris County Board of Education review the attached major purchase report for the month of April. Uh, that was also included in our package. Uh, I'll present any Questions to Mr. Cowles or Mr. Couch, if you have anything you'd like to, to bring up regarding that. Any questions for oh, Mr. I'm just here to answer any questions you might have, but. Sure. It looked, um, a lot of them were pretty you know, standard items that are on the list each month. And then of course there's some, some curriculum things. All right, does, uh, again, if you have questions with Mr. Couch, we'll take action on that. Um, next week as well. And that brings us to item G3, that the Harris County Board of Education review the attached financial report for March of 2020. Uh, Mr. Couch, I will, um, I'll ask you if you have comments regarding that. Uh, I would be pretty excited to speak to that. So I'm sure you will be. Well, look. While it lasts. I mean, I, I, I know y'all are aware of this, but as we review the financial, I, I, I do want you to understand that even where it says the general fund equity is over $12 million, uh, which is fantastic. Please remember, we will continue to pay salaries and that will, it will impact that and there will be some expenditures. We're doing everything possible at this point to, uh, to buy what we need, get our students and our teachers, everything that's necessary during this time but uh, we're not frivol frivolously spending anything. There are some things that we're purchasing now that we'll use next year, and we don't want to put it on next year's budget. So some of that is occurring. Uh, I was in conversation with uh, Kelly Bowen this week several times, and you know we are looking good. But what we'll have at the end of the fund equity. We're trying to get that together earlier this year. You know, usually we get that in September because it takes so long to get all the bills wrapped up and that kind of thing. Well, we're able to do better with that and we're projecting what we think we're gonna spend. I say that to, lead, to, to give you an indication that we are hoping that we will have in the neighborhood of $9 million in fund equity when it all settles out, which would be a million dollar improvement over last year. That would be that would be nice. I'm sorry, right, I'm making so, notes. Forgive me. What well, one other thing, and, and uh, Dr. Finney and I look at this constantly. Um, we're still doing we're still doing relatively well with SPLOS, and and that's gonna that'll be very important. And obviously, it's very important for us 
uh, now, but it'll be very important for us in the future also. But again, that's one of those things that y'all have been very, uh, you, you purchased things that we needed and we've avoided uh, buying things that were, you know, extras that we could do without. So, uh, and I really want to commend Justin for doing such a really good job with keeping on top of all of that constantly. I mean, I, I'm concerned about it, but Justin stays awake at night. So he's doing a great job with it. I appreciate it. No doubt. Um, encourage people to consider, continue to buy local, even when, um, even when the, the virus has gone to buy local, shop the Dollar Generals, the, the various other local privately owned uh, business in Harris County uh, and support those businesses. Any comments or questions uh, regarding the financial report? Fantastic. That will then bring us to item G4. Uh, and due to the current global coronavirus pandemic and Governor Kemp's executive order given to close schools for the remainder of the 2019-2020 school year, there is no enrollment report to provide at this time. Uh, that may pretty well sum up that that uh, area of the agenda. But Mr. Couch, did you have any comments on that? I mean, I, I guess it's arguable that we're having 100% participation at this point, right? So, but uh, for our reporting, uh, we, we are not coming into the school system, so. Well, we, we have had, it, it doesn't show up in these figures because they've not really reported to school. We've had contacts and we, we're continuing to have students move into this area, even now. Mr. Couch, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Has there been any reports from teachers as far as percentages or numbers of kids who are um, participating in their, you know, their classroom Zooms and are checking in and uh, really, um, yeah, participating in this, uh, this new um, way of, of doing education? How's, how's it going? The majority of it, Ms. Oliver, has been anecdotal. However, there, there are, there is a, a Zoom function with our uh, license where we monitor what's occurring. Cool. And, and I can uh, try to get that for you next month. Give oh. you an idea of what's kind of going on, especially by school. I would love that. I think that would be a good number to see. Sure. Any other Thank comments you. or questions? All right, then that will bring us to item H that the Harris County Board of Education share comments, news and information they might have with the public and other members of the board. And I'm going to start at the top of the square tonight with Mr. Carnot Ray. Um, just wanna thank um, Dr. Denny and his staff for their continued support of our administrators and our teachers with our continued training and assisting with uh, getting people set up with Zoom meetings and things like that. It, it's not gone unnoticed. And thank you, Dr. Denny and your folks for a great job with, with supporting all of our folks with that. Um, Ms. Carlisle and, and her staff for, for keeping the HR process moving. I mean, the, the, the bus doesn't stop, so to speak. I mean, we still have to hire new hires. We've had you know, a lot of retirees this year. So a uh, great job in keeping that, that function moving and supporting our staff uh, and uh, employees with those classes, financial classes and things like that. All of that is, I've heard great things about all of those platforms and they're very pleased to have that available to them. Um, I had the opportunity um, along with Mr. Green and uh, Ms. Oliver to go over to um, park and help load the buses with all the supplies uh, going out to, uh, to the feeding program. And it, it was a great thing to, to see our, our bus drivers were there and, and were involved in the whole process. All of our food uh, prep workers and our cafeteria folks that were there uh, all the cafeteria managers, I think, were there, um, and it was just a great thing to see. There were there were actually a couple of students from the high school that were there participating, some other teachers and administrators from around the county. So that it was a great thing, and I actually followed our bus back over towards and 
had the, the opportunity to assist some of the great volunteers that are there waiting for the bus when it gets there to, to serve and, and to hand out. I mean, it was just great to see some of our teachers there and some of our community folks uh, that want to just get out and help and participate. It, it was great. Um, so thank you again to Ms. Baker and, and, and Dr. Finney for your support in that process with the drivers. And of course, Ms. Baker, your, your crew is doing a phenomenal job and the people of, and, and students of Harris County greatly appreciate all the support that, that you're giving uh, to, to help feed their, their children during this time. Thank you, that's it. Mr. Green. Thank you, Mr. Lip. Yeah, I want to echo what Mr. Ray just said about, so we did get to help volunteer um, in, in loading the buses to help feed the, the students of Harris County. And it was a, I tell you, that was organized chaos. I don't see how those ladies do that once a week. Um, that's a lot of food that goes out of that, those cafeterias that park in, in Harris County High School. So thank you to those ladies of the nutrition department. Thank you for the volunteer um, bus drivers that are coming in and, you know, giving of their time to, deliver those meals as well. Um, also want to make sure, and I hope maybe we've got some teachers online that are listening in. I do want to make sure that we say thank you to all of our teachers during Teacher Appreciation Week this week. Um, I know it's different being at home and educating the kids, but um, it's not unnoticed. I mean, so thank you. And we do appreciate every one of you that does everything that you do on a daily basis. Um, I think that is all that I have, Shane. Fantastic. Mr. Goodenow. Um, I'd just like to reiterate the uh, thing that Mr. Ray and Mr. Green said in regards to Teacher Appreciation Week. Oh, we do appreciate everything that they do day in and day out. Um, it takes a special passion to be in a teaching profession and um, Harris County exhibits that throughout our staff. So kudos to everyone with that. Um, kudos also to the lunch staff and all the individuals involved in that food program. Um, I heard you guys did a great job, but um, you did do some work while you're up there putting those lunches out at all, but um, it takes a lot to do that. But um, also too, um, uh, shout out to our retirees. Um, you know, with the social distance, we're not able to uh, have anything like we did last year, but um, give many thanks to a lot of them. We have a lot of people retiring this year that have filled a lot of positions for a lot of years. 30 plus years with some individuals. And also um, we are working hard to fill those gaps, but it's gonna be, to be greatly missed. And um, just to everybody else, just with everything's going on and just be safe. And um, as Ms. Carlisle said, we're one, one team, one dream, County strong. Thank you. Very well, Dr. Sparks. Thank you, Mr. Lip. Um, I would just like to reiterate what everyone want to say too as far as um, teacher appreciation week and as Miss Carlisle alluded to um, we group everyone in that this celebration from Mr. Couch our superintendent and the central office staff to our parents who are homeschooling right now happy teacher appreciation week to each and every one of you and in the words of John Whitehead children are a living message to a time we will not see so mm -hmm. thank you for your efforts very well. Thank you, Ms. Oliver. Ms. Oliver, I believe you're on mute. Sorry. That's it's right. so good to see all of you. And yes, Happy Teacher Appreciation Week and Nurses Week and um, All Good Things Week. And um, it's so good to see each of you and to hear the reports of how things are still going. And oh my gosh, it's so um, exciting to see how even in the midst of things that are so not normal um, that we're still doing it and we're thriving and we're doing it well and uh, keeping it personal and it's just a, a beautiful thing to come and hear these reports. Thank you all so much. Thanks to everybody. Um, let's see, I made just a couple of notes. It's, um, oh, Miss Baker, thank you for thinking about the parents. Um, who need the training for um, for Google Classroom? That's been the biggest uh, the biggest thing that I've heard is that parents wish they knew how to navigate that a little better uh, for their kids. So you are so great to think about training the parents when we get back together, spending some time with them so that they feel a little more confident 
in that homeschool type uh, engagement. So thank you for thinking about that. Um, I enjoyed loading the buses with all the food. Dr. Fanny, your buses are awesome. And you know what's great? Is that your bus drivers take such ownership of them. They feel like, you know, they were just like, okay, be careful, putting the milk carton there. You know, watch those oranges, lady. You know, it was awesome. So it was, um, it was just amazing to see, too, how much those buses will hold. And I was just so proud of the whole orchestrated day uh, or morning. It was just awesome. And uh, just so you know, I, Dr. Finney, I, or Dr. Jenny, is he? yeah, I registered uh, Gwen and Jenny for school for next year, a senior and an eighth grader. And uh, I did it on the mobile app and it took me two seconds. And so it was, it was great. So thank you so much for working hard on the app and making sure that it's uh, easy and accessible to parents and uh, that it's a process that's, that's doable. I wanted to close by saying this that to encourage you i'm reading a book right now called the splendid and the vile and it's about the first year of winston churchill when he was in office he took office in may of 1940 and uh this is a book about the first year of his term of service and it was so may of 1940 to may of 1941 and may of 1940 is uh when hitler decided to start bombing london so uh, the story is about all that changed in the world in that year. And the one tiny little um, detail that I'm enjoying about through the whole book is the stories about people like us. Here we are in this event and this time in history. And it's a, the, when history looks back and they write the book on this year, 2020, what's it going to say? And I love the fact that it's going to talk about people who like the the warriors the heroes of, of our community who come together and no matter what is thrown at us from the governor's office or from whatever that we take care of our community and that we put them first students families food shelter whatever they need we come calling and, and we come ready to help so i'm just proud of you guys i enjoyed it i enjoy reading this book and i cannot help but think of us and how when people look back what, 100 years from now, and they read about the year 2020. I look forward, I just know that they're going to hear stories of heroes like each of you. So thank you so much. Very nice. Mr. Taylor. Uh, I have nothing. Thank you. Fantastic. Mr. Couch. You know, uh, I, I'm aware of this, and I'm sure you all are too. Um, there are so many people in, that do so many different facets of, of what we do as a school system. And I appreciate you know what the board does. I appreciate the time and effort y'all are putting into this. I know that's a lot. The assistant superintendents, all the way down to every other group, and all the way up to the custodians. I mean, th this whole place, this whole system, has worked really well in a very trying time, and, and we're continuing to do that. People to take care of each other, the nutritional staff, along with this bus driver, but they've been unreal. Um, and, and there's just so many things going on in this community where parents are, I'm sure a lot of them are really tired of trying to teach math to some of their kids. My, my folks are gone crazy, but uh, they're putting forth the effort and they're doing what's best for everybody and best for this whole community. And uh, I, I think it's just, I mean, it's a really good feeling to know that we're a part of this, but we're just a part. And, and all of us working together and doing what we can to get through it, you know, we're gonna be all right. Um, it's not gonna be painless but we're going to be okay. And I appreciate everything y'all do and the support that, that all of you have given us at, at the central office has been uh, outstanding. That's, that's parents, that's everybody. And uh, I just want to thank everybody and I appreciate it. Very well. Uh, I'd also like to take opportunity to thank our, uh, our teachers uh, during Teacher Appreciation Week, um, specifically uh, those that um, suffered with me down through the years. Uh, Someone mentioned earlier about, I think it was Steve, uh, you mentioned earlier about the retirees that we have, and, and there's a, a, a good number of those. Uh, one specific, um, uh, I'll call a name, and that's that's Miss Jackson. She suffered through with me for a year, and uh, and she still made it as long as she did. So that's, that's pretty impressive. Um, but to all of our teachers, thank you for what you do every day in that classroom, and thank you for what you're doing now outside of the classroom. Uh, it is significant and it is recognized. And so we are grateful 
for you. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't um, if I didn't also mention the nurses and the support staff, Mr. Couch, to you and your team. Thank you for the leadership that you provided during these really unusual times, uh, unprecedented um, for the leadership that y'all have provided in the various areas uh, to, to guide and to lead through into the principles. Uh, again, thank you for your leadership. Uh, I also want to give another uh, point of gratitude to Pastor Hartman. Thank you for your time tonight to, to be with us. Um, congratulations again to Mr. Proctor. We uh, look forward to working with you on, uh, on the team and on the board. And uh, to all of our graduates, um, which I am sure are not watching this, but maybe someone is and they can pass along to them our congratulations to the graduates this year. Uh, you will forever have a story to tell um, as you go to all of your interviews uh, in life, to every aspect, everything that you do for the rest of your life, you will have a unique story that no one else can tell uh, about your graduation year. So uh, congratulations uh, to each of you. Uh, and with that said, uh, not to put anyone on the spot, but Mr. Couch, I don't know if you want to speak to this or, or whomever you appropriately designate, but uh, I know that there's been some information um, produced publicly from the high school, from uh, Mr. Dunn and uh, the district about graduation. Um, would you mind uh, revisiting that for us and let us know what the plan is? There's going to be a virtual graduation. There's going to be a parade. Would you expound sure. on that? Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, some of the principals working together were talking about um, the elementary schools have, normally they have the students, the graduates that are seniors that went to that elementary school, they come back and walk through the building. Well, that, that's not, this is not a good time to do that. However, what they did was decided to have the students that went to that school have, have like a drive-by. So we extended that and Mr. Dunn was looking at some ideas and some parents had suggested that we have sort of a parade um, for the seniors. So what we're looking at doing now and what um, Mr. Dunn's working on with some parents and some other groups and organizations, um, the seniors will come in in cars They'll come in in a, in a parade where they'll drive down off of Mobley, come through the campus, go around the building and come out and exit on the 116. And they're setting that up for uh, the 15th. And uh, then the graduation uh, is, is gonna be virtual, but you know all the speeches are gonna be uh, plugged into a DVD, kind of whatever, a digitized version of it, and it will go out. And then also on, uh, we hope that on July 27th, um, we'll have um, a real graduation down at the Civic Center. Uh, that's what that's what we're intending. That's where we're heading. That's the direction which we're going. So May 15th will be the parade. Um, and then the 16th, they, they'll distribute the digitized uh, graduation ceremony. Any questions about any of that? I have one. Sure. Where are we supposed to park if we want to, if we want to, if it's stay in your cars, if you're a spectator, um, the parade's going to go to Hamilton. It's going to go, like, where should we park if we want to wave at everybody as they go by? Well, um, you know, I'm probably going to park in the handicap area going into the stadium and get over there and say socially distance from everybody and wave from the bleachers. I mean, seriously, I think we have plenty of room to, to spread out. Um, There'll be a lane, there'll be a road for them to drive through down the, the bus lane of the uh, high school. But you can park in that parking lot, you can park okay. in the front, you can park in uh, uh, the Hope Center and walk up the hill if you want to. Okay. Which would be a really easy way to get in and out. I do that in right. the games. I guess I shouldn't have said that publicly. <laughs> Not anymore, it won't be. But yeah, that, that'll be a complicated issue now. Or, but that, there's a lot of different areas where you can do that kind of thing. and. Um, uh, Mr. Dunn's going to put out some more information, give you all specifically what times you need to start doing. And we're going to have some SRO participation to kind of help with that. Um, you know, we can even park, well, we don't have the as much of the field as we used to have, but but there are places all along there, up by the water tower, the whole thing. But those of you that are parents, I, I need to talk to Mr. Dunn. The parents need to be given uh, first priority. Okay. I think we'll work on that. Any other questions about that? I appreciate that, Mr. Couch. I just um, 
you know, there have been some things produced and heard some conversation. I just want to make sure we got that clarified. So Yeah, I meant to say that. I just got so emotionally attached to recognizing everybody who's been so wonderful. I forgot it. I'm glad you reminded me. You're, you're welcome. And then at this time, I will entertain a motion that we enter into executive session to discuss or deliberate upon the appointment, employment, compensation, hiring, disciplinary action or dismissal or periodic evaluation or rating of a public officer or employee or to interview applicants for the position of superintendent. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Goodenough, second. Second. Mr. Ray, uh, any discussion? All those in favor, respond by saying yay. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries. We will be excused into executive session. Thank you so much. Goodbye, everyone. Good night. Good evening. Dave, you moving me over or what? Uh, you down at the bottom, click on the breakout room. Gotcha. Couldn't remember.
Dave. Hey, Bridget, down at the bottom. Can you hear me? Dave. Hey, Bridget, down at the bottom. Dave Denny. Hey, Dave. Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Oh. Dave. Hey, Bridget, down at the bottom. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can see. Now I have my headphones plugged in. All right, do me a favor. Down at the bottom, do you see where it says? Um, hey, Checkout room? Yes, click that. Hey, can you hear me? Oh. Okay. And then go to, do you see executive? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can see it. I have my headphones plugged in. All right, do me a favor. Down at the bottom, do you see where it's?
Dave, can you hear me? I can. All right. Thank you, sir. Dave, I assume right. we're live streaming at this point. You are? He's still streaming? Do we have all our members? Dave, can you hear me? I can. Yep, I'll take it. Thank you, sir. Dave, we're all here. You are? So um, I will entertain a motion at this time that we accept the personnel recommendations uh, presented by Mr. Couch. So moved. I Mr. Second. Ray, second by Dr. Sparks. Any discussion? All those in favor, respond by saying yay. 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 Mr. Le Mr. Goodnow dropped off. I apologize. I did miss Mr. Goodnow. I apologize. We're well, he off. just dropped off. He's coming in right now. Mr. Goodno, I think you're on mute. You kick you back. Launch me back over. I apologize. I, I uh, we uh, have a motion on the table um, and a second to accept the personnel recommendations. Uh, offered by Mr. Couch, and uh, we are voting for all those in favor respond by saying yay. 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 Any opposed, nay? Motion carries. And with that, we are adjourned. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Y'all have a good